I find it absolutely astonishing how just a slight change of stance completely changes the musculature that's involved in that movement. It's incredible. You know, for somebody that was thinking for a very long time about high specificity, you know, high frequency was the best approach. Man, was I was I foolish about, you know, what that actually meant on a systemic scale. Um, I thought, you know, that doing a squat, doing the best, most holistic exercise there is, just doing that over and over again, the body would just equally develop and just uh, put on muscle, strength, flexibility, all of that, it's purely just by doing an ATG squat, narrow stance, you know, really, really challenging to hit depth, uh, you know, keep a flat back, perfect ATG squat, back squat is what I thought was all you needed. Um, I was very resistive to doing anything else. I just saw that as an ideal and I thought it's a primitive freaking movement. Everyone does it. My, my, my kids have done it ever since from like they could, you know, get enough strength in their legs to actually get on their knees and, and then feet. They've been doing that. Um, but I've been wrong. Uh, I've been wrong because when you change the stance ever so slightly, it's almost like you've never freaking squatted a day in your life, man. It's the, the, the weaknesses that uh, arise right before you when you do something that's so freaking slightly different. So you guys know that I you know, squat narrow stance. And recently, I've been trying to do wide stand squats, and they've completely exposed me. Talk about doing 50% of your one rep max. I'm doing even less than that. I am doing some piddly freaking weight, and I'm struggling with it, and it's, it's just breaking me apart. So I, I kind of worked out the wide stand squats were really challenging for me, and so I started doing them quite a lot, almost like every day. There was a period I did something like seven, eight days in a row, just wide stands and nothing else. No front squats, no normal back squats, nothing like that. And then I tried to fit it into a program with a lot, a lot of pulling, and I decided, okay, let me just take that wide stance and and we'll put it, you know, plug it into uh, leg pressing, you know, so I can buy myself some recovery points back and, and all that sort of stuff. Today, you know, one day after doing very heavy pulling on the rack pull, uh, deadlifts, um, I came in and I knew that I didn't have a lot of strength in my posterior chain. Start off with back squats just to kind of touch whatever the training max for the day is going to be. And my plan was to go to the leg press after doing a little bit of, uh, you know, bicep curls and and, um, and bench. I kind of spent 20 or 30 minutes doing that. Went back to the leg press and I was going to just really go hammering tongs on the leg press. You know, really, you know, push that 20 rep uh, leg press, uh, 5, 10 sets, something like that. Really exhausted. I feel like the leg press is just a really good trade-off. You know, you can get a lot of training into your legs, into that pushing aspect of your legs, uh, especially with the wide stance. You get a bit of adductors, you get a bit of glutes, and it's cheap. There's no spinal, there's no axial loading. So I thought that was a great idea. So I got to the sixth set, and I wanted to do 10 sets of 20 with just three plates aside. And then I just kind of like sat there in between the sets, and I was kind of thinking to myself, what is actually going on here? So clearly the wide stance is... Uh, you know, the important thing here, because if I was doing a normal back squat, narrow, you know, stance on the, on the platform, on the on the leg press, I wouldn't be doing anything for me. It'll, yes, it would train my legs, but it would be training my legs in a position that they're, they're strong at. I'm not really doing much there. And then I kind of started playing around with rotation of my feet. So we're not talking about the width, we're talking now the rotation, external rotation. And so I would do one set like that, one set a little bit more, you know, external rotation. I started noticing, you know, different loading to the muscle. So the more I externally rotated, the more the adductors stretched and the more the glutes were firing on. And I felt, that could be a mix up with the nerves, I felt more quad. Now work that out. How does that make sense? So anyway, this idea kind of like kept building as I was going through the sets, got to six sets and I thought, let me pull the pin here and like go over to the barbell and and try and squat now i've written in my training log as a frog stance squat but then since coming uh, uh, back home and lo you know looking at uh google and whatever there's actually a squat called a frog squat which is essentially you get down into an atg position and you squat up without actually extending your back or extending your hips 
So you're kind of like doing this squatting motion where you are completely bent over. The legs are straight and then you bend your legs. The legs are straight, you bend your legs. But the torso is completely bent over like you were doing a row or something like that, right? But anyway, in the books, in, in my training log, I've written it as a frog stance because I'm thinking about like a sumo frog stance kind of pull. That's where I kind of got the idea from. Anyway, I'll stick with it for the, for the journal's sake. I've defined it anyway, um, what it is. But essentially, it's, it's, it's like a shoulder width apart stance with the heels, uh, that kind of shoulder width. And then full external rotation of the feet. Like we are completely as far as we, almost like freaking parallel, man. Almost, what's the word? Not parallel, horizontal. What am I trying to say here? The feet are basically, instead of being parallel, they are just in a straight line, really, from left to right, as much as you can. And then what that forces is forces your knees to track over your toes, and that is like full external rotation of the hips. What that does, a couple of things, it keeps your torso a little bit more upright because there's no dorsiflexion limiting you at all. The feet are freaking completely out of it. Full external rotation, so full glutes, and I was feeling a lot of quads. I was feeling exactly like I was feeling the leg press. So I was like, man, so I can do a leg press with a barbell essentially, even though it's not kind of a similar thing, but in a way it was because I was really biasing different muscles. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, this feels very different to wide stand squats. With wide stand squats, yeah, you can kind of toe out a little bit, but you're not going to toe out this much. So there's two things going on here. You can do wide stand squats, which calls for maybe some abductor work, you know, the, the glute, the piriformis, um, that kind of, th those kind of muscles. There's probably more external rotators of the hip, uh, more intricate ones, not just the glutes. Uh, so that's abduction. But when you have external rotation, so now you have external rotation and abduction, it's just, I feel like the glutes are just fully in the shortened state and the adductors are fully in the long state and you are going through a squatting motion. It was a very, very bizarre feeling. The bottom line is I did five sets of that and it lit me up like nobody's business. I'm talking about quads, adductors, glutes, felt my hip flexors. It was such an opening thing. I also recall you guys telling me about horse stance. This is essentially... Essentially, like horse stance, you know, when they you know do the horse stance and they hold it in that 90 degree position, but you're kind of repping it out, but full external rotation. That's exactly what I was trying to do. Now, obviously, loading this movement will be quite tricky because you need to make sure your knees are tracking over your toes because if you don't, then you have that knee valgus. With knee valgus is like death to your knees, death to your knees because you are putting all sorts of internal rotation into those knees or into those hips when you're doing that like full external rotation of the of the feet but you're limited by the hip and then you, it's all sorts of forces that happen which are not good uh and there was no way i was going to load that the bar was plenty heavy and it lit me up so i'm, I'm kind of thinking about the difference of, of abduction of the hip like what muscles actually abduct the hip and which muscles externally rotate the hip clearly there are Muscles which do both, like the glutes, they extend the hip, they externally rotate the hip, my understanding is. I know the piriformis is like one of the main ones, but I'm pretty sure the the, the glutes, now there's three different types of glutes, there's probably even more because there's millions of freaking strands there. We like to group them in minimus, medius, and maximus. Um, I think the maximus does some external rotation, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I know abduction is done by the by the glute medius um i need to look this up to kind of really grasp what's happening here could it be that when you are doing fully external rotated uh, hips squats you are hitting external rotation you're hitting abduction um it's probably more superior for your glutes it's probably you know i'm not an expert at the biomechanics of, of the human body but what i felt today at the gym that was different, man. Like, you know, I've done a lot of freaking squats in the last thousand days and I've never been lit up like this. Like this was like unbearable fire in my glutes, in my hip flexors, in my adductors because I just rotated, not so much wide, rotation out. 
externally rotating, like pointing your toes away from you, not inside, out. Man, it's astonishing how changing the stance like that, it's almost like a completely different set of muscles coming into play. It's like back to ground zero. It was unreal. Um, I got home, showered. My mind kept racing about this. And guess what I did? I did some more body weight. I don't know. I want to call them frog squats. Clearly now I can't call them frog squats. Maybe you guys can work out or you can tell me what I should put in the freaking book. I'll, I'll, I'll cross out frog squats because that frog squats is not what this is. Maybe horse stance squats. Maybe that's a bit better. But horse stance, my understanding, horse stance is quite wide as well. Um, so here I'm doing them. You, the next clip you'll see, I'm kind of facing you guys. So you'll see the stance. But you see, I'm trying to really externally rotate my feet. And therefore, my hips. Because the knee has to track over the toes. Um, more upright. More glutes. More quads. More adductors. Whole lot less back. Um, which is interesting. Man, it's, it's astonishing. Like I said, I keep repeating the same thing. I, I can't believe how many different muscles are involved in, in, in just you got, basically strength is very specific. That's what it's trying to tell me. I'm very uncomfortable in sumo. I'm very uncomfortable in this horse stands business. I'm very uncomfortable in a lot of these positions which I'm not practicing. Will I submit myself to the belief that variation is key? But I'm so obsessed with specificity and frequency. It's like the identity of, of my initial beliefs. But now I'm doing so much variation to the squat. I'm exposing such puny little muscle fibers on my body, which I, I'm, I'm ashamed that I was lit up by a damn barbell. Only because I accidentally rotated my feet. Astonishing. Absolutely astonishing. But um, I need to have a, a, a bit of a read of anatomy and, and, and um, biomechanics to kind of work out what's actually going on. Why am I being lit up? Is it same muscle groups but just different fibers or maybe different tension? Because the adductors are completely now spread out. Um, interesting. Very interesting. I've got a name to mention in this video, special thanks edition, um, a fella by the name of Anon or Anon. Um, this fella has been supporting me for quite some time, man. It's been a very, very long time. We've had lots of, lots of really good discussions, lots of brainstorming back and forth. The reason why he's popped up to the list now is he's continued the support and he's upped the intensity of the support. Truly a blessing. Uh, thank you for doing this, man. It's, uh, I always get taken back by, by, but you guys who are, who are supporting me um, so much. Like I almost feel like I don't deserve this this much support. Um, it's really humbling. It's really humbling. It's really appreciative. Um, really, really appreciate you, dude, for this. Um, really makes me want to do more and more for the community. I wish I had more time in the day so I can reply every single freaking message on Instagram and, and Patreon and Discord and YouTube comments, all this stuff. I just, I just don't have the time. But I try my best, as you guys always know, to get all you know back to you guys on time. And I wish, I wish this could be a full time thing, so I can just all I can think about is freaking external rotation and horse stance and what stance and blah blah blah, all that stuff. But there's life, and like I'm sure you guys also have life. We all kind of have to go unplug from this little matrix of squatting that we you know obsess with, and do other things in life as well. Appreciate everyone on the special thanks uh, list. Appreciate everyone on the Patreon, Discord, YouTube comments, Instagram. Um, you guys mean a lot to me. Appreciate all of you guys and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.